Hi, I'm Pavel Spechalski and well, usually the soldering is a pretty simple job. However, from time to time, especially when dealing with slightly thicker cables like for example those AWG-14s and the 4-in-1 ESC, it might get tricky. Why? Well, if you are soldering a thick wire to an element that has a lot of copper in it, the copper acts as the heatsink. And as the result, although you apply a lot of heat with your soldering iron, there is a problem because the heat is then dissipated and the solder does not want to flow. By the way, this video has a sponsor and it's me, or to be more precise, my second YouTube channel when I talk more about do-it-yourself, programming, open source, etc. And if you dig those kind of topics, you might want to go, the link is in the description. But now let's go back to the soldering. If you have a problem with soldering a wire to the ESC, especially foreign ones, because they have a lot of copper to act as a heatsink or anything bigger, there are a few tricks that might make your life slightly simpler. Trick number one is the soldering iron or rather the soldering iron tip. Take something bigger. This, for example, is the 3 mm soldering tip, more slightly more than the one tenth of an inch. And to be honest, for those uh, soldering pads, this soldering tip is, let's say, okay. -ish. I would not be offended of having. 4 mm thick soldering tip because more metal in the soldering tip means that there is more heat in the in the tip that can be easily transferred but that would be probably an overkill on the other hand for the joints over here for the AWG-14 when the battery comes to the ESC, this is too small. Uh, definitely too small over there. I really was struggling a lot to be able to do a correct or oh, acceptable soldering joint. Tip number two is the temperature. Look at the settings on my soldering iron. It's more or less 400 Celsius, slightly less than 800 Fahrenheit. Yes, I know that many people will say you don't need that because the good solder melts in much lower temperatures. Yes, this is correct, but for the solder to be able to melt, to flow, you have to provide enough heat to make the solder with the correct temperature. And when you do not have enough of the contact area between the soldering tip and the pad and the wire and all the solder you already have there and the soldering pad is capable of sucking a lot of heat well the heat goes away and temperature is not rising and as the result the solder is not flowing and when the solder is not flowing it's super hard to do anything useful the next tip is the correct solder i'm using the tinnel this is the polish solder that is well easily available in poland on the other parts of the world maybe not so much however the trick is to use really the good quality solder and unfortunately lead it it's much simpler to solder and put acceptable quality quality soldering join with the lead solder than the lead free solder. This is just the reality. It makes your life easier, but it's not so user environmental friendly. But like I said, it's working much better for the bigger joints than the lead free solder. And then when using the solder, don't be shy to really put more of the solder than less. Because the more solder you will have on the joint, the easier it will be for the soldering tip to transfer the heat energy from itself to what you are soldering. So really, it's better to add slightly more of the solder than less. And finally, prepare your joints. This applies both to the soldering pads and the tips of the wires you will be soldering. What do I mean by preparing of the soldering joints? Well, just apply the initial amount of solder to the pad. And like I said, don't be shy about the solder. It will be fine. It will be actually better when you will have slightly more of the solder on the pad than less. So just be very gracious about this. Yes, the solder has to very nicely flow on your soldering joint, future soldering joint. See, even before I really started soldering, there already is a nice bulb of the solder on the joint. It's well as tall probably as it's uh, the diam diameter of the, of the joint, but this is good. This will be the reservoir of the solder we will use when we will put 
this wire in contact with it to permanently, well, semi-permanently attach the wire to this soldering pad. Exactly the same applies to the wire itself. One more time, add really a nice glob, a bulb of solder. So you know that this is wet, that you have enough of the solder already covering everything to make the joint just simpler. And then when everything is prepared, start heating the soldering pad and on top of that from the top of the soldering tip apply the wire itself you want both pieces of the metal you will be soldering together already well flowing so then when you will click quickly click 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 not quickly but quickly remove the soldering tip and then apply this from above it will, those two pieces will nicely connect together and create a pretty nice, well, I think I even like the quality of this, uh, of the soldering joint. It definitely looks at least okay from my perspective. To prove to you that this method is not an accident, let me repeat the trick. So first, get the pliers, get the wire, apply the soldering tip on the soldering pad, Move the wire from the top so both are flowing. Remove the tip. Place the wire on the soldering pad. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I want... Okay, okay. And you are done. It's not the best joint ever because look here, here there is a spike of some kind. There are few impurities on the outside. Still the joint itself is pretty shiny. That means it was wet enough and this is not a dry joint and should not well fail you during the flight. Uh, not perfect, but I will not be redoing that because the quality is just fine. Remember, when you are doing those things for yourself, you really do not always have to go with 100% best performance ever. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. In this case, it should work. I really have nothing to be ashamed about this soldering joint. So kudos for me. And now let me repeat the same trick seven more times to finish all the eight motors on my coaxial octa. And then, and then maybe I will even take it to the spin today. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and happy flying.